Growing up in the church, I knew of about three options for somebody who was gay and calling themselves a Christian. I had heard that maybe you could become an ex-gay, that if you just prayed hard enough, long enough, trusted Jesus enough, then you would become straight. And I also knew of some people who would read the Bible a little bit differently and conclude that it was okay to pursue a same-sex relationship. And then I knew of people who just fell out of love with Jesus because they were gay. And growing up, I sort of tested each of those narratives at one point or another um, to see if that would be the story that I would live into. And none of them, none of them were. I spent a lot of my growing up years through middle school and high school and college just praying and wanting and trying to, to be straight, to be what I thought I was supposed to be in order to follow Jesus. And then when that didn't work, I wrestled with some of my other options. Can I understand the Bible differently? Do I need to just stop following Jesus? And I found that I, I couldn't do any of those things. And so I began to try to navigate a new space for myself in which I remained gay and yet I remained totally in love with Jesus and willing to do whatever he called me to do. One thing that people have told me when they begin to hear a bit of my story is that they're worried that I'm denying the power of God uh, to, to heal people, to, to make people well and whole. And I never want to deny the power of God to do anything that he wants to do. I, I spent years and years praying that I would experience the kind of healing that I had been trained to expect from God as somebody who was gay, that if I prayed long enough, if I believed enough, I would become straight. And I prayed into that. But the answer that I felt I kept receiving from God was a no, in the sense that God doesn't necessarily call us to lives that are simple. And God doesn't always promise to remove certain desires from us. What he does promise is to be faithful in the midst of whatever we face. One of my favorite comings out ever was to a friend of mine who the moment I told him that I was gay, stood up and said, give me a hug. And I loved, first of all, that he didn't need to wade through all the theology with me just yet. He wasn't concerned about touching me. He just wanted me to know how deeply I was loved. And I think that needs to be our posture towards sexual minorities in the church. We need to be more excited about people's pursuit of Jesus than we are in making sure that they get the right answer or making sure that they agree with us about everything. Before we crack open the Bible to figure out what it looks like to follow Jesus as someone who's gay, we need to communicate to people how deeply we love them and how deeply their creator loves them.